Hello and welcome to my video on a projection mapping workflow based on some AI tools. I will explain you how to create perfectly aligned content for almost any object, be it buildings, posters, graffitis, or even your favorite Pokemon. All you need is a camera, yeah, a smartphone camera will do, no need for any fancy equipment here. Um, the AI tool I will show you, an image editing software to create a mask, um, a projection mapping software. In my case, I use the integrated Stoner tool in Touch Designer, but you can also go for MatMapper, Resolume, or whatever you have for mapping software. And of course, a projector. All right, so this is my projector set up here. Yeah, we got our projector and these are the two objects I want to uh, do some projection mapping on. Here a um, graffiti painting that I got from a Dutch street artist and uh, my favorite Pokemon Pikachu. So it's important now to take a photo out of the perspective from the from the projector that you will use. Yeah? The more, the more accurate the angle and position is, the less you have to adjust later. So I'm going to take a photo now from here. From this photo, I will cut out our two objects, which we can then use inside Prome AI to generate our content. And maybe just a little advice uh, while taking the photo. Try to avoid hard shadows and try to light your objects well. But even if it's not perfect, just uh, yeah, take a photo anyways. It will work out somehow. All right, now you need access to Prome AI. It's the first link down in the description. You can get 200 free image generations every month. That's enough to do a couple of mappings. But if you need more, they also have paid plans. And with buying one of these plans, you also support me and my channel, so I can create more videos like this one here. But the free version is also okay for now. Open Prome AI and click on Create a Fusion on the left. This tool transforms your input image to different styles without changing the shape, which is perfect for projection mapping. Upload your photo, set the render mode to precise and style intensity to around 40 to 50, but also feel free to experiment with these settings here. Then select a style, you can either use the available styles or upload your own. Generate your first image and compare them by hovering above the symbol on the bottom left to see if it really fits the shape. If not, try less style intensity or another render mode. I will just create around 30 images for the graffiti and around 40 for Pikachu. Download the ones you like. If you want a higher resolution, you can get a premium account or use any upscaling tool of your choice. The standard resolution will also work just fine. So we have our styled content now as static images. And a technique I use in Touch Designer, you can use them without edit editing them into a video. But if you like, you can make a video like this one here for free with flow frames or use paid software like Topaz, Topaz Video AI or use frame interpolation in After Effects. For now, it's not necessary though. In the next step, I create a black and white mask, white for the area I want to project on and black for the part I don't want any projection on. For simple shapes, like most buildings or posters, it's very easy, as they are mostly straight lines. For more complex shapes, you need to cut it out as precise as possible. For the shape of Pikachu, I manually create a path around it, but you can also try automatic background removal or object detection. This step is only necessary if you don't create the mask with your projection software. In Touch Designer, there is also the Kantan Mapper tool to do exactly that, but for my likings, it's, it's easier and more efficient to create the mask with Photoshop. Of course, it doesn't need to be Photoshop. You can use any image editing software you like. Okay, now we can finally import the styled images into Touch Designer. I start with the graffiti and connect them all to a switch. To blend between the images, I create an LFO and set its type to ramp, the amplitude to the number of images I have, and to a slow frequency like 0.02. Reference the LFO value to the index of the switch and turn on the toggle 
for blend between inputs. To get a smooth loop, copy the first input and connect it again to the switch. So, so it's the first and the last image. Add a composite behind the switch and import the black and white mask. Connect it to the composite as well. Drop the stoner tool from the palette, then add a fit and set its resolution to the resolution of your projector. After that, add a transform, a null, and finally drop a window comp. Use the null as a window operator. Specify your monitor index, meaning your projector output. Set the opening size to fill. Turn borders off, always on top on, and click on open as separate window. Now just click on update settings from window to set the correct resolution. On the top left corner, you see now the live camera feed of the projection. As you see, we need to adjust the position and I output the mask only for that now to see the borders better. Then I use the transform to scale and reposition the output. Because it is an almost square output, it's pretty easy and I don't even need the stoner tool for smaller adjustments. Connecting back the styled images as an output, we can finally see the first correct projection. Okay, let's move on with Pikachu. The process here is the same. Connect all images to a switch. Create an LFO to control the index parameter of the switch to blend between the images. Make a copy of the first input and connect it again to get a smooth loop. Add the mask and connect it to composite. Drop the stoner tool. Fit with the correct resolution of your projector. Then a transform and a null. Because I want to project on the graffiti and the Pikachu, I connect the nulls of both of them into a composite, which I set to add. Connect it again to a null and drag and drop it as a new window operator. Like you can see in the camera feed, there are now both outputs to see. Same process like before, I use the transform operator to scale and reposition the Pikachu. For the adjustment process, it's better to output the black and white mask only, so we see any light going outside of the shape easier. Let me play around here till I think it fits pretty good. Then I go to the stoner tool for the fine adjustments. By clicking on grid warp and adding more rows and columns, we get this grid with points to drag around. You can use the mouse or click on a point and move it precisely with the arrow keys on your keyboard. With adding some more rows and columns, I can get the projection perfectly matching on the object. Here is the final result. content for projection mapping. Of course, you can't compare to real 3D projection mapping, but it's quick, it's easy, and I think the, the results also look amazing, so why not? Let me know what you think about it, and also if you want to see more videos on the topic of projection mapping, as there are many different approaches to it. All right, it was a pleasure. Now have fun experimenting. Till next time, and as always, peace out.